This is One on One. We are joined by Dr. Gabriel Di Luazo, who is uh, the director of the Thoracic Aortic Program at Hackensack University Medical Center. Good to see you, doctor. Thank you, Steve. Um, it's so fascinating. I was just getting ready for this segment. I started thinking, okay, what is the aorta? Well, the aorta is the big pipe that comes out of the heart. I tell this to my patients. It's like a garden hose. It, it's a big pipe that comes out of the top of the heart, and it gives blood to all the major organs in the body. It's like, you know, gar the Garden State Parkway. And along the Garden State Parkway, you're going to have exits. And those exits on the aorta are like, you know, branches on the aorta and gives blood to the kidneys, the gut, the brain, et cetera, et cetera. But the other thing is uh, thoracic, thoracic aortic aneurysms. They're real. They could be a problem if not dealt with, and that is a big issue for you and your team. Describe it. Yeah. Well, thoracic aortic aneurysms, more and more we're discovering them because more patients are going to the doctor, or going to emergency rooms. They're getting x-rays. They're getting CAT scans. And we're discovering more and more patients have it. Years ago, patients just died and didn't know what they died of, or they had a heart they attack. They had no idea. Right, no one knew. Everyone was sort of categorized as having a heart attack. And now we're knowing more and more that these patients probably had an aneurysm. But thoracic aneurysms in general are a bulging of the aorta, and, and basically it can be anywhere along that aorta, that garden hose. And where I specialize is mostly in the chest region. Uh, occasionally goes into the abdominal aorta, and that, those are more complex aneurysms. But it can be a real problem to patients. But more and more that we know about these aneurysms, we can treat them medically, we can follow them for a long period of time, and we don't need to intervene on them. Doctor, where, where do they even come from? What causes them? In America, the most common is hypertension, you know, high blood pressure. That can cause? Yeah. An aneurysm? That, that is true. Uh, it's just because of the sort of wear and tear on the aorta, basically, the thinning of the, the wall over time, and that leads to the sort of expansion of the, the wall. Now your program, it's interesting, the, the program that you run, the Thor Thoracic Aortic Program at Hackensack, it's a program that was transplanted to HUMC from Mount Sinai. Well, about a year ago, I was uh, recruited from Mount Sinai, and I used to direct the, the uh, program there, and there wasn't really a formalized program in New Jersey. Uh, there are centers in New Jersey that do this sort of work. Uh, Hackensack wanted a formalized program. What does that mean? It really it is a clinical program where obviously we do surgery, stents, et cetera, et cetera, but we also do research. We transplanted our NIH grant where we do research. National Institutes Andros. of Health? That's correct. Why is that important, by the way? Well, I think, you know, it, it gives us sort of the edge in terms of figuring out what is the best method or maybe there isn't, not everyone needs treatment for their aneurysm. And I think that's what we're, we're sort of trying to look at in our lab. And, and, and also, if a patient needs surgery or a stent, how can we do it safely? Yeah, it's interesting. Since you mentioned surgery, and I know it's a case-by-case -case situation, mm -hmm. doctor, what would cause you and your colleagues to say that surgery is the best option versus some other option, which we'll talk about? Uh, most emergencies today that on the thoracic aorta, especially if it's on, right on top of the heart, so the tube sort of six to eight inches of the aorta above the heart today, as we speak today, uh, we fix with open surgery. That's sort of the dissection, aortic dissection, even aneurysm. Stents haven't yet been developed for that region of the aorta. Where we sort of go downstream on the aorta, we become more uh, likely to give a patient the option of the minimally invasive, which is the stent option. But for surgery itself, people who have genetic problems related to the thoracic aorta, so there are genetic mutations where you can develop an aortic aneurysm. There are. There are. Talk like, about like that. Like Marfan syndrome. That's the like most common Marfan syndrome. Marfan syndrome. What is that? It's a genetic uh, disorder that affects one out of 5,000 births, and it is a uh, genetic disorder where uh, the, they develop thoracic, that's one of the things. There are many th or, uh, other organ, system, organ systems that it can affect, um, but the aorta is obviously a major component of the genetic disorder where it can be life-threatening. So those patients, we tend to re offer them open surgery. So for those of us who are people watching right now that say, okay, 
I want to have an, a sense as to whether I'm a candidate or there I have, I'm at risk for having um, an aortic aneurysm. Mm -hmm. Could I find that out? You I mean, can. What do you find out? Like, what do you do? What do you test? Well, I think one is just go to your medical doctor and get a sort of complete physical exam. People who have no history of blood pressure problems, they're non-smokers, uh, they're unlikely to develop an aneurysm. Okay, stay on that. I'm not a smoker, don't drink too much other than a social drinker, but there's a history of heart issues, mm -hmm. problems in the family. Is there a connection between heart issues and aortic aneurysm issues? There is, because there are some aneurysms, because heart issues, what we talk about is you know, high cholesterol leading right. to the blockages of the arteries of the yeah, heart. It's, it's got to be something to cause the heart issue. Right. There are some aneurysms which are related to atherosclerosis. So there is a connection with cholesterol and sort of calcification of the aorta, which is sort of the same issues that go on with heart disease. Right. Am heart. I looking for signs? I mean, what are my symptoms? That's the problem with aneurysms. They are That's the problem? Yeah, because they don't. They, they're, we call them the silent killers. How about my shortness of breath? How about the tingling on the left side of my arm? Well, the tingling on the side of the arm will probably be related to heart disease, like, you know, so people who have angina, who have cholesterol but problems. But that's not this. No. You, the shortness of breath could be related to an aneurysm because it can affect some of the valves of the heart, which can lead a doctor to have, uh, or lead a doctor to order a test like an echocardiogram, which is right. an ultrasound of will the Will it heart. pick it up? It will. Let's talk about the candidates or the patients who do not go the surgical route. Talk about the programs that you have with your, you and your colleagues that deal with them. You have some specialized programs there. Yeah. Well, our, it's called a surveillance, what is it? We have a surveillance program. That's those patients. That has nothing to do with the NSA, right? And no. the federal government, I just want no. to clarify. It, that was a joke, doctor, yeah, go I along know. with it, okay? I, <laughs> but it's a surveillance, what are you surveilling? Well, there are patients who have small aneurysms, so who where they don't need surgery right away. We treat them medically, we make sure their blood pressure is well controlled, we make sure all the risk factors. Uh, they're not smoking any f further, they're exercising on a regular basis, basically living a healthy lifestyle. And we follow those aneurysms over right. time. And what we've learned over, you know, over the last 20 years is that a lot of these aneurysms don't need treatment other than what I just said. They don't need surgery. They don't need a stent. Well, what happens to them? They just stay at bay, and we, we just watch them and make sure they're not getting any so larger. So surveillance basically means monitoring, staying on top of. Correct. And if there is a problem... Then we intervene. But doesn't that require the patient to be vigilant as well? Yeah, that's, that's right. And, and those are those patients where if we don't think they're going to be vigilant, then we may do a preemptive sort of surgery or stent or something of the sort. It's interesting, everything you just described requires tremendous uh, participation, collaboration between the physician and the patient. That's correct. And that's the thing that you know, I feel blessed as, as a surgeon. Not many surgeons have a, um, a long-term relationship with their patients. Well, that's a big deal for you. Yeah, I think. Um, we'll keep talking off the air, go ahead. You know, these patients in our surveillance program, we've known them for 20 years. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One-on-One -on -One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, the Ohlendorf Center, Cone Resnick, the Fidelco Group, Fedway Associates, United Water, New Jersey's Credit Unions. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger, powering NJ.com, and by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.